Hello viewers, in this lecture we will see the velocity of a point in a coordinate frame and the velocity of a coordinate frame with respect to another coordinate frame uh, using differential transformation. So, uh, first let us uh, consider a moving frame M with respect to a fixed frame F which is denoted by capital T that is uh, F T the frame M with respect to the frame F is denoted by the operator T matrix the homogeneous transformation T. Uh, then uh, the moving frame after undergoing a small rotation of an angle delta theta about a vector k, unit vector k with respect to the fixed frame and a transformation translation of del x del y del z along the x y z direction of the fixed frame. Then we will get the new position of the moving frame m is t plus delta t. So, it is denoted like this. So, because we are uh, mo moving with respect to the fixed frame, we have to multiply the rotation matrix and then the translation matrix in the left side of the operator t. Now, keeping delta t in one side and taking the t to the other side, we get delta t the small change in the translation and rotation orientation of the coordinate frame is given by the translation del x del y del z into rotation k delta theta minus identity matrix multiplied by the coordinate uh, transformation T that there is a homogeneous transformation capital T. So, this is uh, uh, the fixed frame and there is a moving frame M. So, after undergoing a small translation and rotation with respect to the fixed frame, the rotation about the fixed frame. And then the translation uh, with respect to x, y, z axis of the fixed frame. So, we get the new position. So, this is the uh, t and then this is t plus delta t orientation of the new position. Now, in the similar manner, we can obtain the same uh, position t plus del t by making a trans translation of this much along the x, y, z direction of the m frame itself, the current frame and rotation by an angle delta theta t with respect to a unit vector k t with respect to the m frame. The, so, previously we did the translation and rotation with respect to the fixed frame and now if you make the translation and rotation with respect to the with respect to the uh, current frame itself we get t plus delta t so the delta t is the same the small change which happened to the m frame is delta t now we are we have obtained the same thing by multiplying in the right side because we we have made the translation rotation uh, with respect to current frame, we multiply in the right side of the matrix T. So, delta T in this manner is calculated by this expression T multiplied by this matrix. So, we call this matrix as D. The previously we call it as this matrix as D into T here and the t into. So, we denote uh, this matrix inside the bracket as d superfix t ok this matrix. So, the differential uh, transformation is uh, in one way it is capital D and in the other way it is d superfix t. So, 
given by these two equations and which is calculated by multiplying this translation and rotation matrices. Now, let us actually substitute the translation and rotation matrix and then see how it looks like. So, the translation del x del y del z matrix is given by this and the rotation matrix about a unit vector k by an angle delta theta is given by this expression where k x, k y, k z are the component of the unit vector. So, if you have a coordinate frame then if the k vector is the unit vector in this then k x, k y, k z are the k x, k y, k z are the component of the vector of the unit vector. So, the meaning is k x square plus k y square plus k z square equal to 1, the length of the vector is 1. So, we have already seen that the general rotation uh, about any vector k vector by an angle delta theta is given by this expression. Now, the where this notation v of delta theta means uh, 1 minus cos of delta theta. Now, uh, we are dealing with a small translation and rotation. So, that means the values del x, del y, del z and delta theta they are very small values. So, we can approximate sin delta theta to be delta theta, cos delta theta is uh, close to 1 and this v of v of delta theta is close to 0. So, substituting that these values approximate values of sin, cos and this expressions, we get the rotation matrix k delta theta is uh, very close to this matrix. Now, the D matrix is first we multiply with a translation then the rotation minus identity matrix the, as we have seen in the uh, this slide. D matrix is this one translation rotation minus identity in one way another is the translation with this much of uh, translation and this rotation with respect to the current frame minus identity. So, in both the ways when we actually calculate translation rotation minus identity we get D to be like this. In the same manner the same thing can be repeated with superfix T in all the places wherever k x is there we can put k x superfix T delta theta superfix T that means the translation and rotation are with respect to the current frame only. So, uh, that d superfix t can be also calculated in the similar manner uh, with the difference that del x del y del z will be replaced by this thing minus k k z t delta theta t. k y t delta theta t del x t etcetera. I think we are using del x t So, we can fill the same thing with the superfix t in all the places. So, that is our uh, D superfix T matrix. So, this is a differential transformation with respect to the fixed frame and this D superfix T is representing the differential transformation with respect to the current frame. <coughs> so, the differential transformation it indicates the small motion, it uh, represent the small motion of the this thing. When it comes to the robotics, we can make use of this differential transformation because in a robot manipulator, there will be a end effector coordinate frame 
and the base coordinate frame. It is a fixed frame and this will be like a moving frame. So, for a small time interval when the end effector frame makes a small rotation and translation, we can make use of the uh, relation like this small translation rotation matrix with respect to M itself end effector itself or with respect to the base. So, both the things can be calculated and the relation can be found out using the following. Now, another way of uh, calculating the rotation matrix is using the fundamental rotation matrices. So, rotation about the x axis by an angle delta theta x and rotation about y axis about z axis or the these are the standard uh, rotation fundamental rotation matrices. So, the same effect of rotating about a unit vector k by an angle delta theta. So, this effect can be brought by using the three different rotation. We can rotate about the x axis like this and then about the y axis and about the z axis. So, after making the three rotation, we will get the same effect as we rotate the uh, k vector by an angle delta theta. So, how much we have to rotate here? This is del theta x and del theta y del theta. So, if we rotate about the x axis by this much angle and y axis about this much and z axis about this much angle, the ultimate result will be rotating about the k vector by delta theta angle. So, we will see how this numbers are related by the following. So, the rotation matrix about x axis y z are given by this. Now, if we multiply all this, if you are making a rotation about x y z of a coordinate frame, the product is given by this expression. So, uh, here we are neglecting, when we are multiplying this matrices, this three matrices rotation matrix, what we will get is for example, if I write for x axis 1 0 0 1 0 and delta theta x cos cos of delta theta x minus sin and sin cos Zero, 0, 1. So, that is a cos rotation about x axis. Similarly, rotation about y axis is 0, 1, 0, and then cos uh, sin minus sin and cos. Similarly, about the z axis. Now, when we multiply all these three matrices, we will get some terms like delta theta x, delta theta y etcetera, the product of these small values. So, this we will neglect, this will be neglected. Similarly, delta theta x into delta theta z, all these uh, products will be neglected, only the linear terms will be retained here. So, when we multiply all this, the approximate value uh, of approximate matrix which we will get after multiplying is given by this expression 1 minus delta theta z etcetera. Now, the general matrix, so we have neglected the higher order terms here, so the general matrix is given by this expression. Now, if we substitute for the t plus delta t, this is the new position of the m frame as we have calculated in the beginning, t is the uh, initial position and t plus delta t is the new position after a small change. So, here also we do the same thing, the small rotation is given by this one and then small translation is given by del x del y del z. 
So, T plus delta T is given by this matrix and delta T if you take the T to the other side we will get this matrix delta T is a differential transformation and by subtracting the identity matrix we will get 0 in the diagonal and so delta T is nothing but D into T. So, now if you compare this D and the previously calculated D both are same previously calculated D in the equation A yeah, here D is calculated by this expression. So, if you compare this A and B we get the delta theta z is given by k z into delta theta. Similarly, delta theta x is given by k x into delta theta etcetera. So, the meaning is when we make a here when we make a rotation by an angle delta theta about the vector k unit vector k the same thing same effect is obtained by rotating about the x y z axis by these uh, angles. So, the relation between delta theta and delta theta x delta theta y delta theta z and the components of k, k x, k y, k z. So, they are given by this expression, this one. So, this implies that when we square it and then sum all of them, we will get k x square plus k y square plus k z square into delta theta is common square. So, that is equal to delta theta x square, delta theta y square and delta theta z square. So, this is uh, equal to 1 actually because it is a unit vector. So, this implies delta theta square is given by this expression, delta theta x square and y square z square. This expression is there. See once we know delta theta value or delta theta x theta y theta z we can calculate the angle by which the k vector is rotated and the component of each one can be calculated by k x equal to delta theta x by delta theta from each one of them. So, knowing this values the rotation about x y z we can calculate the component of the k vector as well as how much angle we have rotated about the k vector can be calculated. So, now we come to the main formula which represent the velocity of a frame. So, from the previous equation delta theta the small change in the uh, orientation of the uh, matrix T or the uh, coordinate frame M is given by delta T equal to this expression d t. Now, we divide both sides by delta t small t. So, this is the small time interval. So, everywhere we have to divide by delta t small t. So, now if you take limit delta t tend to 0 in the limiting case this each one of them represent the velocity these are the angular velocity and then uh, these are the linear velocity del x by del t del y by del t del z by del t are the velocity linear velocity in the x y z direction. So, they, that velocity is we denote by d x d y d z. Similarly, rotation rotational velocity angular velocity about x y z are denoted by del x del y del z here. So, the velocity of a frame is given by the coordinate homogeneous transformation t and in the left side we have to multiply by the velocity along the x y z direction and the rotation about the x y z direction velo angular velocity and the linear velocity matrix. So, 
This is a very important formula which represents the velocity of a coordinate frame T. So, now velocity, so this is the velocity of a which we have seen just now. If you are uh, taking the velocity dx dy dz and the del x del y del z with respect to a frame f. So, these velocities which we mentioned here are the velocity with respect to the x y z axis of the fixed frame. So, that means d x for example, means the frame m moves d x distance in unit time along the x direction of the f frame. So, like that uh, d y d z represent the movement along the x y z uh, direction of the f frame only. Okay. Similarly, the rotation with respect to the f frame. So, we have to multiply in the left side by this matrix to get the velocity of the frame. Now, velocity of a point, if you have a point in a fixed frame and it is moving uh, with uh, linear velocity d x d y d z and angular velocity del x del y del z, we just multiply the point x y z uh, by the matrix here that gives x dot y dot z dot the velocity of the point, inst instantaneous velocity of the point. Now, if you combine both, if you have a coordinate frame, fixed frame and another frame is the moving frame and there is a point P in the moving frame. So, if the point P is moving with respect to the moving M frame itself, let us say it is moving uh, in, in this frame and the M frame itself is moving with respect to the F frame, then how to find the velocity of the point P with respect to the F frame. So, that is given by this formula, because we know that uh, x f the point the vector x with respect to the f frame is written by t into, because we know that any vector with respect to f frame is f t m and the same vector in the m frame. So, the same thing is used here. Now, differentiating both sides with respect to t, we get d d by d t of x f this one is equal to <coughs> the derivative of this uh, t, because this is we, we are denoting it as t, t into x m. So, the derivative of t multiplied by the vector x m the, that is given by this term, then t multiplied by the derivative of the x m vector. So, we have seen that the derivative of a point, the, the velocity of a point is given by the uh, rotational translational mat velocity matrix multiplied by the point itself. So, we have to write the t multiplied by the velocity of the point plus the velocity of the frame multiplied by the point itself. So, this is a very useful relation to find the velocity of a point uh, with respect to the fixed frame. So, in this example it is given that there is a fixed frame and a moving frame its uh, uh, orientation is given expressed in this uh, description. So, with respect to f b 2 1 3, 2 1 3 is the coordinate of the origin with respect to the fixed frame, this is the moving frame. So, 2 1 3 is the coordinate of the origin and the x 1 axis is parallel to y axis, x 1 axis is parallel to the y axis of the fixed frame. Similarly, y axis of m frame is parallel to the negative x direction and z axis 
are parallel z and z1 both are parallel. Uh, now, a point 1 to 1 is taken in the m frame with respect to m frame we take a point 1 to 1. So, it is given that so there is a translational velocity 0 0.1 centimeter per second along the z axis of the fixed frame and a rotational velocity of 0 0.004 radians per second about the y axis of the fixed frame. So, the moving frame is moving with a velocity translational velocity of 0 0.1 centimeter per second along the z direction, it is moving in this direction and a rotational velocity 0 0.004 with respect to the y axis. So, it is rotating about the y axis of the fixed frame with this velocity and simultaneously the point P itself is moving with the 0.2 centimeter per second along the z 1 direction of the m frame and a rotational velocity of this much uh, about the x 1 of the. So, the point P is moving with res we inside the m frame with these given velocities. So, now if you are observing from the origin of the fixed frame, so how what will be the velocity of the point from the fixed frame from the point of view of the fixed frame. So, that is what we want to see. So, the point p with respect to fixed frame is f t m into the point in the m frame and the homogeneous transformation of the frame is given by this one according to the description of the x y z axis and the origin is 2 1 3 multiplied by the point m itself, the point p with respect to m. Now, differentiating this using that uh, differentiation formula uh, we get this one. So, directly substituting the point the velocity of the point inside m frame is given by this one by substituting the rotational velocity uh, with respect to the x axis and then the translational velocity with respect to z axis multiplied by the same point and the frame m is rotating with respect to the z axis by this much uh, radians and about the about the y axis rotation about y axis and translation about z axis. So, by substituting those numbers we get the velocity of the frame. Now, by substituting all this we get the velocity of that point uh, that point is uh, p with respect to the f frame which, which we are calculating is given by the product of all this one will give the velocity of that point uh, p with respect to the f frame. So, similarly we can also uh, see this example a triangle is given a b c inside a frame some coordinate frame is given f frame. So, initially the triangle has the coordinates 2 1 0 is the coordinate of A and 1 2 0 coordinate of B and then C is uh, given by this expression 1 2 <coughs> x is 2 y is 1 and then B is x is 1 y is 1. So, here it is 1 1. 0 and then c is 1 2 0. So, these three coordinates are given and so it is rotating about the y axis of that given frame with a velocity 0 0.03 radians per second. So, it is rotating about the y axis uh, by this because positive rotation is uh, moving from z to x. So, this is the direction in which it will rotate by 0 0.03 radians per second. So, after some time the triangle will be in some other position. So, we, we are asked to find the 
position assuming that this thing we want to find the position of the uh, vertices at a given time t any any other time t. So, for that we can simply uh, take the velocity of the point is x dot y dot z dot is given by the velocity matrix multiplied by the same point. So, as we have seen earlier this formula because point 0 3 radians is with respect to the y axis th that is the position of y if you see here. See in this matrices the y velocity will come in this position and z velocity here and x velocity. So, uh, whenever we have these velocities we should substitute in the appropriate uh, position we get this formula. Now, x dot is given by 0 0.03 into z this is the value y dot is 0 and z dot is given by the product this one. And the initial now we can once again differentiate we will get x double dot is 0 0.03 into z dot and from z dot if you substitute we will get this expression. We will get x double dot is equal to 0 0.03 whole square into x z dot. So, we will get this one. So, it is a simply a second order differential equation 0 0.03 whole square into x here. So, when we solve this equation we will get in terms of sin and cosine it is a simple second order differential equation with the initial conditions are given like this. So, we can solve it and then get the uh, position as a function of time. So, normally th the solution of such equation uh, is some constant into cos 0 3 t plus c 2 sin 0 0.03 t. So, whatever time t we substitute we will get the value and this constant c 1 c 2 can be found out using the initial conditions. So, uh, this can be done for each uh, vertex separately. If you take one vertex you have to solve this another ver vertex etcetera. So, we can find the position of the vertices of the triangle at each and every time instant by following this uh, solving the differential equation. Okay. Uh, so, in this lecture we have seen uh, the formula for the po uh, velocity of a point in a coordinate frame and the velocity of a coordinate frame with respect to another coordinate frame and how to utilize the uh, formulas the standard formula for computing the position and orientation of a point at each instant of time as it is moving using these formulas. So, in the next lecture we will see uh, further related results about the differential transformations. Thank you.